And welcome back to Aging Well. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb. With me today is my guest, Jeannie Lydon. Hi. Thanks again for being here today. This is great. We're learning so much about the Adult Family Care Program. Um, and at this point, I was hoping we could sort of circle back and take a closer look at one of the really important aspects of the program. And that would be the role that the nurses and the social workers play in, in making it work and how they're both uh, crucial to, to making it work. Uh, can you tell me a little bit Certainly. more about that? It's um, in AFC. It's really, really uh, collaborative, and we're really, really a team. Nurse and social workers working closely. Even even though we're two different disciplines, we do a lot of the same thing, and we reinforce a lot of the same um, things. The biggest thing, okay, for our, for our nurses, they our nurses are, of course, medical. You know, they're mm -hmm. going to be doing a lot of teaching about. Uh, medications, uh, they, do they, does the client and does the caregiver understand the medications? Are they being taken properly? Um, any new medication that comes along, teaching, or any new diagnosis that comes along, um, there's going to be teaching about that and oversight to make sure that both the caregiver and the participant, mm -hmm. if they're able, understands what's going on. So, but both nursing and social worker, we do so much with caregiver stress. Mm -hmm. Really coming in, I think a lot of times the caregiver looks forward to the visit, you know. Mm -hmm. They can vent, they can talk about what's going well, talk about what's not going so well. Mm -hmm. So that just um, talking back and forth and, and giving emotional support is just such a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, our social workers do a lot of the psychosocial stuff for both the caregiver and the participant. Um, they assist with things like advanced directives, healthcare proxies. When you know um, someone needs an adult day health program, we need to know the community resources because we travel a lot of different, um, you know, air cities, and our nurses and social worker have to know resources in all different places. And mm -hmm. many of our participants do go to adult day health programs, so um, we want to be able to know where we can recommend that, and we mm -hmm. encourage if. It's nice that you know we have um, some clients with dementia, and they may go out to an adult day health program uh, for dementia. It gives the uh, caregiver a little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. So, the psychosocial piece, emotional support, comes from both nurse and social worker, healthcare proxies, finding adult day health programs, mm -hmm. and if it ever comes to the point where it's too hard for somebody that they no longer, you know, the home setting is not appropriate, then we would switch gears and we would have the resources to assist the family. Mm -hmm. and going in a different direction. Absolutely. And I think something you alluded to earlier is that there's a, um, uh, basically a, a, a health plan that, that incorporates those two viewpoints that they come up with for each client who comes into AFC. So there's really a comprehensive look at the, the needs, and it, and it has those two viewpoints integrated into it. Absolutely. We do uh, um, individual um, health care plan whenever anyone comes in the program within 30 days mm -hmm. of them starting. And it's really the nurse has a piece in it, the social worker. We list what the caregiver is and, and the participant, what, who's going to do what. And a lot of times it's all of us doing the same thing. So there might be a psychosocial piece in a care plan. There might be a self-care deficit you know, related to what the medical diagnoses are and all the kinds of things that, that's going to go on. The caregiver is going to provide supervision, oversight, or physical hands-on hands on assist when bathing and showering, so all those kinds of things. And if they need, you know, direction, we're going to give them that, that direction because they also fill out a caregiver log, our, our, our caregivers, a daily log saying they do A, B, C, D for this client. Mm. So... Um, that answers your question. And one thing I will add that you're jogging my memory on, the uh, clients do really seem to appreciate it because we recently had our uh, customer satisfaction surveys. Um, I think it was over 96% positive. Yes, it was. That, you know, that makes you proud as the director of the program when you see that. Mm -hmm. And it's been consistent over the past several years that um, very positive, um, you know, feedback. And, um, and again, it attests to um, uh, just such a great team of nurses and social workers that um, they really bond with these families and they, they treat them with such care and respect. Mm. And um, these families and clients, they know that they can count on them for support. So That's really great. And switching gears a little bit, 
um, the uh, topic of qualified caregivers. It's my understanding that AFC might be on the lookout for people who could be qualified caregivers. Can you tell me a little bit more? Yes, we absolutely are. In, in most cases, like we say, people are already living in the same home, a uh, caregiver may be a daughter or a son or something, and they live in the home. And with AFC, the person has to live together. Mm -hmm. But we have, I even had a call just today, mm -hmm. um, a person that um, is looking for, a person who's living on their own right now, and um, has dementia, and things are getting tougher for this person to be safe at home. So they're, they're looking into AFC. So um, it's tough because we have a list of about eight qualified caregivers in different areas. Um, I think Revere, we have Malden, you know, um, Dorchester, Hyde Park. So we have this qualified list of caregivers, but do we have a qualified caregiver right now in an area of where this family is looking? Um, we don't. So what we had recommended to, to this um, caregiver, she's very religious from just talking on the phone. Mm -hmm. I, I had asked her if she um, belongs to any special church. And um, because she'd like to keep her loved one in the area that they're in. Mm -hmm. And so she's going to go to her church this week and talk to her pastor and talk to um, the community members and really put a plea out there. Mm -hmm. You know, my sister has early onset dementia. I'm looking for somebody who would be willing to take her into their home, love her, care for her, mm -hmm. and they'll get a tax-free stipend for doing this. So we look any way we can get a caregiver. We have clients that need caregivers and handicapped accessible homes. That's our biggest. We fill these homes so quickly. And, you know, a caregiver, we have many caregivers that qualified in mental health, mm -hmm. not near enough, you know. And um, we don't want to turn away someone because they have a mental health diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking for qualified caregivers that may be willing to take someone in their home with a mental health diagnosis, either be willing to learn about it or already have some background experience. So there's people who the program would like to help, but you need the caregivers to actually, you need that, that part of the match. Absolutely. And you know, sometimes we'll have a, someone looking for a home and they live in Somerville on you know, uh, Morland Street and they're only willing to go as far as uh, Broadway the next street over. Mm -hmm. It's not like that, you know, we're lucky if we could get this next town. Yeah. And, and fortunately right now we do have kind of um, several right around this area. Um, so, th so that's a tough one, but we're always looking. And, mm -hmm. you know, even if anyone is watching this show and they're taking care of a loved one, just ask themselves, you know, um, is their loved one on mass health? Are they providing cues and supervision? or physical hands-on hands assist with bathing, dressing, mm -hmm. ambulating, eating, or transferring, mm -hmm. that they could be eligible for this program. Absolutely. Yeah. It's my, uh, one of my aunts is in that um, exact same situation where she's caring for uh, my grandparents. And it's the sort of thing, I, I thought of that when I first learned of this program, was that it could really help a situation like that work. Um, really so. does. So I've definitely seen it in practice. And one thing I want to mention is that the service area for AFC, with Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, but we actually do serve a much wider area. We have a wide catch area, and I think that's going to be shown a, a little later. But we have you know, probably about 30, 40 families right locally here. Mm -hmm. We travel as far as Georgetown up north, where, where Sudbury you name it, we will go somewhere, especially, you know, when we have a participant who needs a home mm -hmm. and is a qualified caregiver, that's why we have this wide catch area where we're willing to go to these places. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add? Just it was a pleasure, just that if anyone is watching this program and they have any questions whatsoever, to call us, that mm -hmm. this is um, where... We love talking about the program. It's a program we believe in. It's a program that continues to grow. And our goal is to help people stay in the least restrictive environment as long as they can with supports in place. So feel free. I'm available, you know, 617-628-2601, extension 3072. Jeannie Lydon, the director. And I love talking about this program. So any kind of question, feel free to call.
It's been my experience. You are passionate about AFC, and it's been a pleasure to have you in the studio well, thanks, today. Nathan. Thank you, Jean. My pleasure, too. So that's all the time we have for Aging Well this month. Um, we'll be back soon. Uh, thanks again for watching. <laughs>